What's that, mate? You want to know how to build a dev site? Let's go inside and I'll show you. Hello, I'm Kath, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up a dev site or development site. A dev site is useful when you're building a website and it's not yet in the final place where it's going to rest. So for example, you might be building a site for a client and it's a good practice to build it in your own development area so that you can make sure you get paid before you take it live. The second reason you might need a dev site is that you already have a site that's live and you're building a new one to replace that. So you don't want to take the old one down yet, you just want to build the new one at your leisure and then replace it when it's ready. And the third reason you might want a dev site is that you might not have registered the domain name yet, for example. So there could be any number of holdups, but you want to carry on with the project. So you just build the site and then you take it into its final home once it's ready. So the way we're going to create the dev site is to set up a subdomain. Now you could also set up an add-on domain in a very similar manner, but today we're going to do a subdomain. And we're going to do it a little bit differently to how a lot of people do it. This is how I was taught by Mark Conger, and he's a man who knows his business. We are putting our subdomain outside of public HTML. Now, a lot of people put their things inside public HTML, and uh, you know I was taught that's bad practice for a couple of reasons. First, if your main site that's associated with your hosting gets infected with malware, for example, it's a lot easier for it to then infect your other sites if they're all inside the same folder. Keeping them outside of that folder helps to mitigate that risk. The second reason is that when you back up that main site that's associated with your hosting account, unless you exclude all of your other sites, there's a fair chance they'll be backed up as well, which means that you're creating a much bigger backup document than you need. So it's good for that reason. But thirdly, I just find it's a lot easier actually to manage because it becomes like the files and folders on your computer. They're all organized in a really logical and easy to use fashion. Now, I've said you don't need to have a domain, but you do need to have a hosting account set up because obviously that's where you're putting your dev site. And it needs to be a host with cPanel in order to follow along with the instructions that I'm offering here. So the dev site I'm gonna set up today is one that I'm doing for Beck Steele. She's one of our Webby Do students and she's a lot more advanced than most of our students because she's a graphic designer who's looking to extend her offering into web design. So she wants to know how to do all of the, you know, quite technical stuff so that she can do it for her clients in the future. So I'm going to be logging into Beck's cPanel on her hosting account and doing it live there so that you can see how to do it as we go along. So this is Beck's cPanel. She's on Smart Hosting, which is a London-based host. And I've logged in there via her hosting account because that's the easiest way I find to get into cPanel for them. So the first thing we want to do is click on File Manager up the top here. And that's going to throw open a new window, which is our files. So you can see there's not a lot in here at the moment, but this public HTML is where all the stuff is for the site that Beck is currently building as part of the Webby Do course. And we're going to actually set up a file outside of public HTML. So that's the thing that's really different to how a lot of people do it. As I just said before, but I want to reiterate it, don't put it inside public HTML. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is click on New Folder. And we're going to give the folder a name. So I'm going to call this one public subs underscore dev site and I'm going to call it cruise because Beck's actually building a new website for cruise control security which is her husband's security business. A um, new, new folder will be created in. Leave that blank and click create new folder. Now you'll see straight away that it's appearing on the left here. So it's underneath public HTML and it's a public sub or it's a subdomain dev site cruise. Okay, now we're going to come back to the cPanel and we're going to look for subdomains. So we just scroll down until we find that and here it is under domains. So just here on this particular site, they're all a little bit different. So sometimes it takes a little while to find it. Um, and then in subdomain, we're going to give it a name and in this case, we're going to call it dev site. You can see all the other drop downs from my all the various other clients I've done this for. So dev site cruise, I'm going to call this. Um, and now this doesn't always happen, this domain thing. Um, this is something that's quite specific to smart hosting. So in most situations, you won't see that. And the document root, you need to go back to that one that you just 
Creative 4. If, once you start to type it, you'll see that it comes up. So there it is, public subs underscore dev site cruise. That's a folder I created just a moment ago. And then I click create. Okay, so success dev site cruise dot magic dirt dot com dot au has been created, which is what I'm expecting because it's a subdomain of Magic Dirt, which is Beck's main account. Okay, so we go back, and now you'll see if we scroll down, <coughs> excuse me, we have dev site cruise dot magic dirt dot com dot au, and it's in the document route that we created before. So that's as far as we're going in this video. We've created the space where the dev site is going to live and the next step is to actually get WordPress and your website onto that space. Now there's a couple of ways you can go forward. You can do it all from scratch so you can install WordPress and then upload your theme and all that kind of thing. But we're going to do a second method which is to clone and migrate a gold standard site. So that's a site we have which is our kind of starter site, we've set it up, everything's up to date, we've got our theme that we like to use and that's up to date, it's got our API key in, we've got all our plugins that we like to use, the security plugin is all fully configured and that takes ages so it's really nice not to have to do it every time. And that's how I've advised Beck to go forward with her clients and so we're going to do it that way for the second video. So come and check that out if you'd like to see how to clone and migrate a site using Duplicator. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.